peaches and welcome to today's video. If you're new to the channel then you may not know that we are watching interior design masters all together and I am sharing my honest review and opinion of all the completed spaces. And I talk to you guys about what I like and don't like and why I feel that way. If you're interested in seeing my reaction to the final designs of each episode of Interior Design Masters, then keep on watching. So in this week's episode, they are doing a commercial space. Now it's quite different from the other two episodes that we've seen so far. First off, it's not residential where they all have like bedrooms or home spaces. This is something totally different. Although there was teams, each designer got to design their own space. So there's eight contestants left and they're put into teams of two to design four different commercial spaces. They're both gonna come up with a design and present it to the shop owner, and then the shop owner will pick whichever design is their favorite. Whoever the shop owner picks will be the lead designer, and then the other person will support that design. Not to mention that this week is also unique in the sense that whatever team does the worst, both designers go home. I mean, that's what happens in the real world when you're designing, oftentimes, you don't work alone or you're working on a team and maybe not all of your own designs get executed and there's a lot of compromise that goes into it so i think it's a great skill to have but it's definitely very risky because your partner messes up then you're going home too so this should be very interesting with that said let's get into the first room Nikki was lead designer and right off the bat you can see her design was very strong. To me this seems like a very good partnership and that they worked well together. Nikki's idea to display the yarn is genius because yarn is very hard to kind of display. It's an odd shape. In her display you can still see all the options but it's not chaotic. It's like an organized chaos which is kind of the only way to do it when you have so many varieties of yarn. So I think she did a beautiful job with this concept. If this was my space that I was designing, I for sure would have grouped all the same colors together and made a ombre effect of some sort. Now, not only is this very satisfying to the eye and kind of helps it to, instead of look so scattered, makes it look a little more intentional, I also think that as a shopper, usually you go into a store with some type of plan or idea already and you may already know your colors i think that more likely than not you probably already know the colors you're looking for so it would just be much easier for me to like look at all of the purples versus having to find the purples throughout the whole space so she has this big feature wall of the yarn in these tubes on one side and then she has this like very light wood Island, which I think is very smart because usually people who come in for knitting are gonna be working on some type of project and I think that this is a great place for them to meet or to lay out their design or just to get all of their project details in order so this is a great idea. Now she has these baskets that are quite large on top of the island. I don't love that but to me it looks a little messy when you have so much already going on on that wall. Personally, I would want to lean to very clean decor because you don't want it to look cluttered. I'm not quite sure why she needed that extra storage with these extra large baskets. If anything, I would have done something a little more sleek and modern of like a cube type system to put the excess yarn that you didn't have room for away in there because you have enough options on the wall. Now on the opposite wall, she has like a cube system where you can still see all the yarn, which I think actually plays well. It's not, because it's the same system, it kind of looks balanced. Now my only concern with this idea, especially in the cube system, is if you start to remove the yarn, because right now every cube is full, as customers start to buy the yarn, will it stay in place because there's no support on either side. So that would be my only concern, but I think it looks really nice. And she even takes this idea into hexagon shaped shelves and shoves more yarn into those, which I actually quite like. So you have the cylinders, you have the square cubes, and then you have the hexagons. So you have a lot of shapes going on. 
And then for her register, she uses this like pastel mint green tile. And as we saw last week, Nikki really likes tile. And I think that this is a smart use of that tile. I love the color that she added. It wasn't too bright. I think if she would have gone with a bright color, it would have been way too much for the eye. But I also think white would have maybe been a little too clean. So this color is a nice pastel. It's soft. And it also goes really well with the idea and the feeling that you get when you think of knitting. So I think that was a very smart choice. She also used that same wood from the island on top of the register. And I think that was a nice way to tie in the materials. Now she chose to put this like white metal, almost industrial type of lamp. It's not my favorite. To me it looks like they have pretty adequate lighting from the window next to the register and then above the top. I don't know if she needed that lamp. And if you did need that extra light source, I don't think that's the one that I would have picked. I just don't think it quite matches. She also puts this wooden framed black letter board behind the register and I think that's quite nice to be able to put up sales or whatever is going on. So I really like that. And she has two wooden shelves behind the register and she decorated with more yarn and honestly I think it's a little overwhelming because you have so much exposed yarn already. I don't know if you need to add decor with yarn as well. I know it's a knitting shop but you know, last time I talked a lot about balance and as a designer, it's one of your greatest skills to be able to pull back and pare down. And I just think that there's so many teeny tiny little things throughout the whole shop that it gets very overwhelming. If I were to go in and change something, I don't think I would do shelves back there. I think if anything, I would just keep it simple with a large piece of art or maybe take that letter board instead of doing it vertical, getting a slightly larger one and going horizontal to kind of be aligned with the register. And I think that would just be a little more simple. Now, I'm not quite sure if this store sells clothing because behind the register is this, it looks like almost a, a rack of some sort to hang your clothes. And I don't know if this is to showcase what you can do with yarn or if they're selling those clothes. Um, I don't think that I would have done that. If they're selling it, obviously you have to display the options. But to me, it doesn't look like it's merchandise to sell. It looks like there's only about three or four pieces. So I probably would have just taken that out. Or if anything, I would have used that as art on the wall instead of just like a print, maybe like used knitted material as some type of art piece um, and gotten a little creative to make something unique. Then to me it looks like in the corner they have a little workstation. Uh, there's a desk with a book and then some other things that looks like they sell some type of accessories. And then they have this like plastic turquoise chair. You guys know that I don't love plastic anything so I would have definitely chosen like even just a simple wood chair. I don't think you need anything crazy, no like accent chair, but not a plastic one. That one's not my favorite, it looks a little cheap. I don't love their rug. I would have gone even with like a long jute runner, um, something that's a little more natural. I don't think that you need another geometric pattern. I would have kept it solid, even played off of that, that green and the teal and found some color in that family and just done a solid rug and taking out this geometric pattern. I just don't think it adds anything to the space. Now as for their window display, they also use those big cardboard tubes that they used inside to almost look like people and like little creatures where they have the yarn coming out of the top as hair it almost looks like. I just think that it's like um, a little safe, like they could have gone further. If anything, I think it would have been maybe a cool idea to make it let's say a mural out of the yarn instead of painting a mural you know trying to make something even if it's something simple like a rainbow I think that would have been very eye-catching so I would try to conceal and pare back a little bit that's my main recommendation for this room but I do think there's a lot a lot of smart ideas put into this room <music>
Frank and Jerome's skate shop. Okay, so for this store, Frank was the lead designer and Jerome was helping him. So right off the bat, I love their skateboard design. It does look like they have a lot of inventory, but I think it's a great way to showcase all of those boards. So if I was going in as a customer, I could see all my options very straightforward in my face. So I like that they did that. I do actually quite enjoy the geometric pattern that they put along the register and on the walls. I don't think that they overdid it. They didn't take it all the way up the wall and they just kept a very simple color palette of the white, the light gray, and the blue. And I think that the geometric shape goes well with the skate shop. Obviously the skate shop is selling clothing as well and I don't mind how they did it. They kept this industrial look using these like pipe beams and I honestly quite like what they did. I think industrial is the perfect style. And I don't even mind the rack in the center. It, it, you know they have a lot of product to put out on the floor and so it doesn't feel overwhelming to me at all. The hat rack is very clean and simple. So they have the white on the walls, the gray flooring, and they use that blue on a few accents. So I think that they did a really nice job with their color choices. And it's not just like, oh, I'm a skater boy, but it really elevates the space to be more mature and sophisticated, even though it's a skate shop. I also quite like that they did this like case with the wheels inside. They really have a place for the boards, the shoes, the accessories, the clothes, and the wheels where everything's very categorized, which I think is a great concept and very easy for the customer to shop. It does look like they have a lot of product to sell, but it's not overwhelming. They really did do a good job displaying all of this product. Then it looks like in the back of the store they have this little like cutout, that, and I guess you can also test out the boards back here, there's carpet for them to try out the boards out. To me, it does feel quite small. I think that obviously like you couldn't roll the board. I get where they were going here, but it, fe it feels like it fell a little short. Also, there's just so much back here. The walls are so close together and there's so many accessories that it feels just a little cramped. Um, and if I were to stand on a skateboard, I would be worried I would like knock something over. So that part, I'm not obsessed with. When you are a skater, you may not want to be going in to like shop for all of your clothes. You may just want to be going there to try out a board. And so I think that if you're going to create a space that you can test out a board, it would be something, it would maybe be a good idea to have an area for your friends to come and like you guys all go down to the shop together, you play around with some boards. It's more of a culture and like a community where people go and hang out and it's driving traffic to your space. Whereas this little corner, you're bumping into things, there's so much going on back here and you can hardly fit two people. So that area just doesn't seem like it was well thought out and executed. It's definitely a little more sophisticated and I don't know if this design particularly like targets their design their ideal customers. You really want to design with your customers in mind. So what do skaters love? Like what's their atmosphere? What's their energy? Now this team did not do a window display, but you can see the geometric pattern on the walls from the window. So I think that's nice. It's definitely a different type of skate shop, different than something like Vans. It does seem a little more elevated. <laughs> Kyle's vintage retail store. For this team, Ju is the lead designer. Now, right off the bat, you can see it definitely is a little more feminine, which makes sense seeing that it seems to be a female clothing shop. For the register, they use this turquoise, this natural wood that they use on the A-frames, and then also this pink color. And the pink is very subtle, and they brought that up the wall behind the register. And then they also took that same blue and put it on the curtains for the fitting rooms. And the color choice was very smart because it kind of plays with that vintage era in which the clothing pieces are from. So 
it just makes a lot of sense and it seems very well thought out and it also goes well with their branding and their logo that is behind the register. They use these little pots to almost make like a living wall type of thing in the back and I honestly think that's a very cool idea. You can do it for very, very inexpensive. So this is a great technique that people watching can do at home as well. And I think it makes almost like a feature wall where when you're checking out, you definitely are gonna notice that wall. Now behind the register, they take the pink all the way up the wall onto the ceiling. And I think that that's smart to designate the area, kind of break up the space to focus on the register. However, they bring this raw wood to make almost like a drop down open ceiling. To me it looks like they were gonna put drywall on it and they just never finished it. I don't love it. I know that there's a lot of this exposed wood throughout on the A-frame and on the register, but to me it just looks unfinished. If anything, I would have taken that diagonal pattern they took from the register and put that maybe on the ceiling. For the display, they put a lot, obviously, of the clothing along the walls, which you see in most retail stores. They had these nice wooden shelves with some mannequins to showcase how these outfits can be put together. And then they also created these A-frames, and I really, really like these A-frames. They allow you to, one, hang things, but also a shelving unit that doesn't take up so much space and put a lot of different merchandise on there. Not only do we have this geometric shape on the register, but we're also creating this geometric shape with this A-frame. Now as for their lighting choice, I do really like that they chose to do this like abstract, geometric, linear light. You can just see that they're bringing little bits and details throughout the whole space to bring everything together. And it really does showcase the merchandise very well so a lot of smart little things throughout the entire space i honestly think it's really nice that they went with this light natural wood it really allows the clothing to shine and be the focus versus doing some crazy color that would contrast with some of the merchandise it really kind of falls away and allows the customer to focus on the what they're shopping for. Now I do notice with the layout of the store it seems like there's a decent amount of floor space. I like how there's a lot of the floor and you can walk freely around. They really played off the era and brought all these little elements from the merchandise into the store and made it like kind of a cohesive unit. So they did a very good job. last space is Verity and Tarian's room. So this is a woman's clothing shop. This is focused I think more on like a neutral, softer, more feminine apparel. So I think that right off the bat you can kind of see that they did that in this room. They use a very soft baby blue. Now I think that the layout for the space is quite decent. They have the register in the middle of the wall and then next to it they have a lot of symmetry. Either side they have two clothing racks and then a little glass shelf. I, I actually really like the glass and the white that they use throughout the space. It's very clean, it doesn't take anything away, it's very simple and elegant which matches the energy of the apparel that they're selling so that's a very good choice. This area just really falls short for me. They do these two, they're, they're in between like an accent chair, they almost remind me of like a desk chair. I always prefer real wood over particle board, I just think the quality is so much better. But I also think that beyond that they're using a, a set of three tables. I would have, I know that this is more of a unique shape, but nowhere else in the space are they playing with abstract shapes. I would have just gone for even like maybe a gold glass table to bring in that glass from the jewelry case. They definitely don't need three of them. People are going to maybe put their Starbucks on top of it. They're not doing, you know, a school project here, so you don't need that much space. And it just kind of makes it look a little messy. It could also very much use a rug to anchor the space as rugs are meant to do. And it just kind of seems floating. It's not against the wall. It, it just doesn't have the best purpose. Also, it's not even facing the 
right direction it's not facing the fitting rooms so there's this area could definitely be improved upon and then they use a little um, little cubby system as almost like a side table I would have just taken that out they, they put a coffee machine on top of it and I guess that's nice for guests to make themselves a cup of coffee while they're waiting, but it's not a service that you really need to offer. Sure, it may make the shopping experience better, but I would have just committed to going a, a little extra step with this seating area, taking that little side table out, and made like two a little more comfortable seats with that gold glass coffee table and I think it would have just been a little more anchored with the rug there and seemed more intentional. And this designer really did want an emphasis on their jeans and their pants selection that they sell. And now they used this cubby method over on one side and they hung some jeans up but I don't necessarily think that that is any different than any other store that sells jeans. It's not like emphasizing on the jeans, it almost looks just like another thing that they sell where I think that this shop owner really wanted it to be a experience shopping for these pants and one of their selling points on something that they have an advantage of, which I think that they missed the mark. I don't think what they did was bad. Even if the shop owner didn't want an emphasis, I do think that's a little bit of a difficult way to shop for jeans, simply because there's nothing over here that says the cut of the jeans and like the sizes, so you have to unroll them to find the sizes. And for jeans, you really want a specific cut. You may want boot, you may want flare, you may want skinny. There's so many different types of jeans beyond just the color. Whereas like I think with a scarf display, this may have worked. But there needed, if they wanted to use this type of display, there really needed to be more information to make the shopping experience a bit easier for the customer. We used this area as an educational spot you know, especially with all the shopping online nowadays, retail is fighting to stay in the game. And one of the reasons that people go shopping physically now is to try things on and to feel things and to have that experience. So to make it more of an experiential place where they're getting education, they're touching the materials, they can understand what gene is best for their body type. If they really played on that in a whole process, then that would have given them something special to offer versus I could shop for jeans online the same way I would shop for jeans in the store so it's definitely an opportunity that was missed you know they also put a mirror just like resting and you know it's a full-length mirror it's resting against the wall and I think that's very odd placement walk to basically in front of the register to look at yourself and it's not uh, high enough on the wall so I don't even know if you would see your entire self not to mention if there was a line of people checking out then they would be blocking your view to see the mirror so that doesn't make sense to me I wouldn't also the mirror is larger than that pillar of the walls I do have a mirror inside the fitting room so I really just don't see why they need this mirror as well I think that the chalkboard wall is a great idea in terms of they get to post any of their sales or anything that's going on in the store. So that's a very smart idea. I always love a customizable element in a retail space. As for window display, now they do have the obviously the big windows to see the merchandise inside. And they did add very beautiful hand lettering to the window, which I think did elevate it a little bit. So I like what they did. Nothing too crazy, but it does match the vibe of the space. All right, guys, so that was episode three. Now, obviously, a lot was at stake. Two people went home, Verity and Tarion both went home, which out of all four spaces, I definitely think that made the most sense. They had a lot of areas that were not all the way thought through. A lot of good ideas, just a little lack on their execution. It's sad to see two people go home because I did like some of their designs, but that's the name of the competition. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought, if you're happy that those two went home or if you would have sent a different team home, what you guys thought about the other designs and any changes that you would have made if you would have gone in and had this challenge yourself. If you guys don't want to miss any of the rest of the episodes, then make sure you're hitting subscribe down below and don't forget about that bell icon to get notified every time a new episode comes out. And if you guys enjoyed hearing my thoughts on this week's episode, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And as always, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye!